Yo, what up guys, Magic IQ here, and today I'm bringing you guys my second build of Volume 3 for Drift Builds. Now, technically, the first one doesn't even work, but you can still use it in the campaign because they're only bringing S-Class and A-Plus Drift events to multiplayer, but luckily, Drought sent me a whole bunch of builds for every class, so we have an S-Class build here, which is a 350Z. Now, in his opinion, this surpasses every other car in the category and pretty much is the best car. We'll find out as we do more testing throughout this volume, but I hope you guys enjoy today's build video make sure to leave a like comment and subscribe and go check out droughty's channel down below in the description it will be the first link so without further ado let's get straight into it so as you guys can see we have this 350z here i kind of have like a low origin livery on it i made real quick i'm probably going to actually put some work into this livery because i really do like drift cars now for the stats we don't really care about the 0 to 60 or the top speed what we're going to take a look at is these power numbers now it has 855 horsepower and a max torque of 739 foot pounds which is pretty good Honestly, puts out a lot of power, and that's what we need when we're drifting. Now, for the motor, we're using a 435 brake horsepower 5 liter V8. This has a potential of 950 horsepower, but it comes stock with 435 brake horsepower. So, if you wanted to use this same motor to drift around with the vehicle at S Plus, you could potentially do that. Um, there's a few different ways to get this to 329, but I like the way Jody did it. I had some adjustments that I tried to make, but honestly, I think this is the way to go. He's definitely right. I tested out a little bit of drifting literally just now, and this game feels pretty weird, but this car makes it a lot easier than any other build I've used so far. So. Without further ado, the engine parts. We're using an Elite induction here, a Super ECU, Elite fuel system, a Pro exhaust, and an Elite screw supercharger. That will always be the forced induction of choice. Now for the nitrous bottle, it is a bronze stock sport nitrous bottle. And we have Elite regular suspension, very important, or you will go over the PI level. And we have Elite drift tires here. We also have the stock sport clutch and the five-speed gearbox swapped into this thing with an Elite differential. Now for the auxiliaries, you can put whatever you want there. I'd probably go drift and near miss but to be honest you're always going to be at full nos you don't even really need to waste some money on auxiliaries if you don't have it now for the handling we have 90 percent drift in the setup i have but you can also go to 95 or even 100 i kind of liked it a little bit grippier so i lowered it but 100 percent grip would probably be most optimal um i just have ocd and i need to see 329 so i'd probably leave it at 95 percent Steering sensitivity. This is complete personal preference. If you feel like the vehicle's too twitchy, lower it. If you feel like it's not twitchy enough, raise it up. Downforce is all the way to the left, completely low for me. Um, if you add downforce on a drift build, usually they're just going to grip up and over rotate. Um, at least in my experience, that's what happens in this game anyway. Trash control is off and drift entry is gas or brake tap. Uh, this car is pretty good man i tried to build it actually to use it in s class before as like a competitive racing car and it has the numbers but it just does not put down the power um it's like this car was made to drift and drift only in this game so i hope you guys enjoyed uh, it's been magic iq bringing you guys another droughty built drift car for volume three i hope you guys enjoy i am live streaming volume three right now so make sure you guys go check that out um i appreciate you guys for tuning in it's been magic iq and i'm out